pursuant to Article 145.2, as read with Article 150 of the Constitution, the National Assembly approved a motion for the removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency Rigathi Gashagwa AGH, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. The Speaker of the National Assembly forwarded the following documents to the Senate, being the record of proceedings of the National Assembly and the evidence adduced in support of the impeachment motion. One, a copy of the notice of special motion and an affidavit of the Honorable Ekomas Mwengi Mutuse, OGW MP dated 26th of September 2024 and received on the 27th of September 2024, running from page 40 to 42. Two, electronic evidence relating to the special motion contained in a flash disk. Three, order papers for 1st of October 2024. Communication from the chair number 046 of 2024, issued on Tuesday, the 1st of October 2024. Communication from the chair number 047 of 2024, issued on, the, on Tuesday, the 1st of October 2024. Certified Hansard and votes and proceedings for the 1st of October 2024. Communication from the Chair, number 048 of 2024, issued on the 2nd of October 2024. Letters of appointment of advocates for A, Swanyan Company Advocates, for His Excellency the Deputy President, B, Dust Dustin Omari Advocates, for Morani Manufacturers Limited. Letter to His Excellency the Deputy President, forwarding the notice of motion, affidavit of service on His Excellency the Deputy President, Order paper for the 2nd of October 2024, certified answered and votes and proceedings for the 2nd of October 2024, public participation advertisement of the 2nd of October 2024, being the Daily Nation newspaper, Standard newspaper and Star newspaper, public participation advertisement of, of the 3rd of October 2024, being the Daily Nation newspaper, Standard newspaper, Star newspaper and Tai Faleo. Public views, templates, English and Kiswahili. Memo to constituency stroke county office managers dated the 4th of October 2024. Public participation advertisement of 4th of October 2024 being Daily Nation newspaper, Standard newspaper and Star newspaper. Order issued by the High Court sitting at Kerugoya on Friday the 4th of October 2024. Press statement by the clerk of the National Assembly on the extension of public participation issued on the 4th of October 2024. This communication is long and the bearing the situation of Senator Gloria Roba, I will allow her to take her seat. Praise statement by the Clerk of the National Assembly on the extension of public participation issued on the 4th of October 2024. Public participation advertisement of the 5th of October 2024 being standard Saturday Nation newspaper and, sat and standard newspaper. Public participation report tabled on the 8th of October 2024. Response to the notice of special motion from His Excellency the Deputy President received on the 8th of October 2024 at 4 p.m. Electronic evidence by His Excellency the Deputy President relating to the special motion contained in a flash disk. Order paper for Tuesday the 8th of October 2024. Communication from the Chair number 049 of 2024 issued on Tuesday the 8th of October 2024 and certified Hansard and votes and proceedings for the 8th of October 2024. Now, Honorable Senators, pursuant to Article 145, subsection 3A of the Constitution, and standing order 78-1 of the Senate. At the sitting of the Senate held on Wednesday, the 9th of October, 2024, the charges against His Excellency the Deputy President as contained in the motion of impeachment by the National Assembly were read out to the assembled Senate. Honorable Senators, at this juncture, allow me to remind you of the mandate of the Senate in relation to the proposed removal from office by impeachment of the Deputy President as provided for under Articles 150 and 145 of the Constitution, 
as read together with Standing Order 78 of the Senate. In particular, Article 150 of the Constitution states as follows. The Deputy President may be removed from office, A, on the ground of physical or mental incapacity to perform the functions of the office, or B, on impeachment on the ground of a gross violation of a provision of this Constitution or any other law, and two, where there are serious reasons to believe that the Deputy President has committed a crime under national or international law, or three, for gross misconduct. Two, the provisions of Articles 144 and 145 relating to the removal of the President shall apply with the necessary modifications to the removal of the Deputy President. Now, Article 145 of the Constitution, Standing Order 78, Part 1 of the Second Schedule of the Standing Orders of the Senate, provide for the procedure to be followed in the hearing and determination of the proposed removal from office by impeachment of the Deputy President. Specifically, Article 145.3 of the Constitution and Standing Order 78.1 of the Senate provide that the Senate may, by resolution, appoint a special committee comprising 11 of its members to investigate the matter. Honorable Senators, we recall that at a sitting of the Senate held on Wednesday the 9th of October 2024, the motion for establishment of special committee was deemed to have been withdrawn pursuant to Standing Order 70. This therefore paved the way for the investigation on the proposed removal from office by impeachment of His Excellency the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya to be held in plenary. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, by way of status update, pursuant to Rules 4A, Senator Karen Yamo, attentive please. By way of status update, pursuant to Rules 4A and 6 of the Rules of Procedure, when considering the proposed removal of the Deputy President, in plenary, the Senate invited the Deputy President to appear and be represented before the Senate during its investigation. The Senate further invited the Deputy President, if he so chooses to appear before the Senate, to file an answer to the charges with the Office of the Clerk of the Senate by 5 p.m. on Monday, 14th of October, 2024, setting out the following. One, the Deputy President responds to the particulars of the allegations. Two, the mode of appearance before the Senate, whether in person, by advocate or in person and by advocate. Three, the names and addresses of the persons to be called as witnesses, if any, and witness statements containing a summary of the evidence to be presented by such witnesses before the Senate. And lastly, any other evidence to be relied on. Pursuant to Rules 4B and 7 of the Rules of Procedure, when considering the proposed removal of the Deputy President Plenary, the Senate notified the National Assembly of the date for the commencement of the investigation and invited the National Assembly to designate members of the National Assembly who shall appear and represent the National Assembly before the Senate during the investigation. The National Assembly was further invited, if he so chooses, to appear before the Senate to file with the Office of the Clerk of the Senate by 5 p.m. on Monday, 14th of October 2024, setting out documentation of the following. One, designating members of the National Assembly, if any, who shall attend and represent the National Assembly in the proceeding before the Senate. Two, indicating the mode of appearance before the Senate, whether in person, by advocate, or in person and by advocate. Three, indicating the names and addresses of the persons to be called as witnesses, if any, and witness statements containing a summary of the evidence to be presented by such witnesses before the Senate. And lastly, specifying any other evidence to be relied on. Now, honorable senators, ladies and gentlemen, on 14th of October 2024, the Office of the Clerk of the Senate received a response reference, S, reference number SW, stroke PET, stroke 153, stroke VOEN, stroke 01 2024, and dated the 14th of October 2024 to the invitation to appear issued to the Deputy President from a senior company advocate who indicated that His Excellency the Deputy President had appointed the firm to represent him in the proceeding before the Senate, and that the Deputy President would also appear in person and by advocates. The letter also indicated the list of counsel representing His Excellency, the Deputy President, and the list of witnesses for the Deputy President. Similarly, on 14th of October 2024, the Office of the Clerk of the Senate received a response reference number NA stroke CAN, 
stroke call, stroke 2024 into brackets 562 and dated 14th of October 2024 to the invitation to appear issued to the National Assembly from the clerk of the National Assembly indicating that Mr. GNA Advocates LLP had been appointed to represent the National Assembly and that the National Assembly would appear in person and by advocates. The letter also indicated the members of the National Assembly representing the National Assembly in these proceedings and the witnesses for the National Assembly. Pursuant to Rule 8 of the Rules of Procedure, when considering the proposed removal from office of the Deputy Pre uh, President in Plenary, on Monday 14th of October 2024, the clerk of the Senate furnished each party with the documentation filed by, other, by the other party in accordance with Rule 6 and 7 of the Rules of Procedure. Honorable Senators, ladies and gentlemen, the hearing program, which has been appended to today's order paper, detailed the various activities in the hearing and determination of the matter and the time allocated for each activity. It will be crucial that all parties comply with the time allocated. I will repeat, it will be crucial that all parties comply with the time allocated. The parties will be notified of the balance of time on each activity through the clerks at the table. In summary, the program states that after we have dispensed with the preliminary matters today, Wednesday 16th of October 2024, the charges against the Deputy President as submitted by the National Assembly shall be read. Thereafter, His Excellency the Deputy President will be given an opportunity to take a plea on the charges. This will be followed by an opening statement by the National Assembly and the Deputy President. After the conclusion of the opening statements, the presentation of the case of the National Assembly shall commence. The National Assembly will have a maximum of three hours for presentation of the case and re-examination, while the Deputy President will be allocated two hours for cross-examination of witnesses after presentation of the case by the National Assembly. Honorable Senators will be given an opportunity to ask questions or seek clarification from the National Assembly. This will take us up to the end of today's sitting. At the sitting schedule for tomorrow, Thursday the 17th of October 2024, His Excellency the Deputy President will present his case before the Senate. The Deputy President will have a maximum of three hours for presentation of the case and re-examination, while the National Assembly will be allowed two hours for cross-examination of witnesses. Honorable Senators will also be given an opportunity to ask questions or seek clarifications from the Deputy President following which the closing statements by the parties will be made for a period not exceeding one hour each. As provided for under Rule 27 of the Rules of Procedure for removal of Deputy President by impeachment, after the closing statements have been made, the hearing shall conclude and the Senate shall proceed into camera session to deliberate on the issues raised. The Senate shall thereafter proceed to debate a special motion prior to voting on each of the charges. At this stage, a supplementary order paper will be issued to facilitate this debate. In accordance with Article 145.7 of the Constitution and Standing Order 788 of the Senate, the voting shall be by all senators. The Deputy President shall cease to hold office if at least two-thirds of all senators vote to uphold any of the impeachment charges. If, however, the vote in the Senate fails to result in the removal of the, of the Deputy President, the Speaker of the Senate shall notify the Speaker of the, Nas of the National Assembly accordingly. Honorable Senators, I now invite counsel for the National Assembly to introduce the legal team of the National Assembly and the members representing the National Assembly by stating the full name and designation of each person. You may proceed, counsel. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, for the National Assembly, the legal representation is as follows. The Honorable James Orengo, Senior Counsel, leading the team. Mr. Paul Nyamodi, Legal Counsel. Myself, Eric Gumbo, Legal Counsel. Dr. Mudomi Viankolu, Legal Counsel. Mr. Moses Kipkoge, Legal Counsel. Mr. Peter Wanyama, Legal Counsel. Mr. Ken Melly, Legal Counsel. 
and Mr. Mwangi Kangu Legal Counsel. Mr. Speaker, sir, this team is further assisted by uh, a team of uh, our younger colleagues, Mr. Alex Bayer, Legal Counsel, Mr. Elias Ouma, Legal Counsel, Mr. Eric Murioki, Legal Counsel, Mr. Boniface Mawira, Legal Counsel, and Ms. Joan Geruto, Legal Counsel. From the National Assembly, we have the Honorable Otiende Amolo, Senior Counsel. We have the Honorable George Gitonga Murugara. We have the Honorable Samuel Chepkonga. We have the Honorable John Makali. And we also have the Honorable Zamzam Mohammed. I submit, Mr. Speaker, sir.